Welcome everyone, it's Vapor Dragomar. It's time for some more Raid Shadow Legends. We will continue up the Tower of Terror. Last time, I showed you how infuriating Arena is. In this episode, we are going to be continuing, and we were doing clan quests. Oh, yes. Clan quests. As fun as that is. With using Vizier, who... is great for clan quests. So glad its accuracy is not great. Otherwise, that would suck. I would do a thing called suck. Okay. Now you might be asking why I'm not using my typical goon squad. It's because my typical goon squad on this account is not something... It's not something I like to flex because it makes me look pay to win. Even though it is the exact, this account is the exact opposite. It just looks that way because it's been there for a full bloody year. That's the thing. That's the bitter part. And yet, I have not beaten this tower the entire time. Hoping this is it. This is the, the moment when I actually beat this tower. Is this rotation. Okay. Now this is going to seem a little nasty. But we're going to start changing things up a little bit. We're going to start inserting new stuff into the mix. The deal with Jingle Hunter and Shamrock. As you can see, things are already sticky. As we get up here, especially with the uh, the advent of Horden, you might ask, why does the advent of Horden matter? Well, as it turns out, Horden is a major pain in the butt. How much of a pain in the butt, you might ask? Well, Horden 
can do some very unspeakably nasty things to those who think they're safe from him. Because you're not safe. You're never safe from Horden. Okay, how far up do we have to go? All right. So let's see if we can get past 449. So we get to floor 50. With some rotations, I don't even get there. Like, my PBs haven't broken at floor 50 before. And then... And then from floor 70 onwards, things get really thorny, and I'm going to have to use no... I'm going to have to use more experienced late-game teams. And then finally... After floor 89, anything after floor 89 is a personal best if I beat it. And then past, and then we get to floor 120, which may take a while. Um, we beat it, but floor 90, floor 100, yeah, that's another 30 floors of, of hell. To get there. Which doesn't sound like a lot. But in reality. 30 floors past floor 90. Is. Gruesome. Like. It's going to be gruesomely difficult. To get past. To actually. Beat the whole thing. The only good news is that we have, like, two burners. So the spiders sh shouldn't be as big of a problem if I can get past the waves. Getting past the waves, though, is going to be a nightmare. There's a reason I'm targeting that Elder Skarg. There is a reason. Because Elder Skarg is the bane of my existence. See, I would rather have to face them doing what they just did there than to have to do anything. With um. With that Elder Skarg. Now let me tell you. Elder Skarg is not something you want to fight. It really isn't. Elder Skarg is not something you want to fight. He is such a pain. And the worst part is the game has never given me an Elder Skarg. Because I would gladly take Elder Skarg as a substitute for Mashald. Gladly. But of course, the game hasn't given me him either. So many champs. Like, yes... They've given me Magnar in one account, but they haven't given me Magnar in this account, and I only have one account with Magnar. And there's so many other champs I don't have. Shald's another one. Uh, Elder Skarg, Trunda. A whole bunch of different champs. Um, Sky Touch Shaman. The list goes on. Ursula the Mourner. Bellower. The game hasn't even given me a Bellower this entire time. Or a Geomancer. It gave me Mordecai, finally. 
took nearly a year to get Mordecai. And that's after, on Christmas, the game trolled me on Mordecai. On Mordecai, over Christmas, it was like, no, take two Ultimate Galaxies and have a nice day. I mean, I could use Ultimate Galax for that, but seriously? Seriously, game? Oh, no. Oh, no. Not. Not. Oh, not Scartosis. I hate Scartosis. No. I'll, lay, I'll leave Madame Saris alive just a little longer, but not Scartosis. Screw Scartosis. No. We're not allowing Scartosis to live today. No. I've had enough bad experiences with Scartosis. No. Answer is no. We're not leaving Scartosis alive. It's another champ the game won't give me. Like, finally the game on one account managed to give me a Madam Saris, and I never got to see another one again. Not even on the account that had the Madam Saris. Never again. That account doesn't even have a cold heart. The game never gave me a cold heart on there. It gave me two cold hearts here. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. Still have never seen a Maneater. I finally got to see a Demetha. Finally. Took long enough. Long after everyone's like, nah, I don't care about Demetha. Demetha shows up. Out of nowhere. There's so many legendaries in this game that I'll, I, I don't know if I'll ever see them. Or even epics. Okay. Epic champions only. I mean, I could use Demetha, but then there's... Yeah, I need to put the Reviver in there. Let's give it a go. I mean, I have a lot of options. I could even even use Magnar if the game gave me Magnar. Since it's epic champs only, um I'm pretty sure Jingle Hunter would apply as well. My problem is I haven't really fully leveled Jingle Hunter. And do you really blame me? Do you really blame me? I mean, I think I could, Lex Clan v Clan. I was more interested in Outrider, even though he's an uncommon, because he's got that nuke potential and he's extremely accessible. Everyone can get him. Which greatly improves his value. Because I don't want to act like I use champs that no one else is able to get. Because that, that's what ninja and stuff makes me look like. So it improves my image to use champions everyone can access. 
And one of those is Outrider. Looks like we are going to beat this. I do want to improve my... My, um... My other build for, uh... Dark Elhain. <sighs> Let's try anyway. The climb is going to get harder from here on out. I do want to get Akoth, even if it's way after... Well, I don't even know. Like, again, I don't know what happened to the Bard Clan, and I am not immediately interested to know because I'm pretty sure in the absence of people not kicking people that leave the clan or what, I mean, the, the, the casuals, it's probably crumbled into a shadow of what it was when I was trying, tr at least trying to kick the people that were AFKing. But at least, at least I have this clan where I can do, you know, kick the people I want to kick and try to control the narrative so I can actually make progress in the game, actual progress, actually get somewhere rather than just be eternally casual. To the point where progress is measured in decades instead of years. Which is where that is. And I'm not really the type that wants to take decades to do that. I'm not saying there aren't types. That will want to take literal decades to make progress in Raid Shadow Legends. But I am not that type. I may look like that type on the surface, but I am not that type. Oh my god! Finally! Dear Lord, how far up are we? Yeah, we're getting close. Um, here, we're going to have to sub some people out. I'm going to have to throw Ugo into the mix. You're like, why Ugo? Well, the thing is, is I need someone to block buffs if we can. Because the problem is... We're going to get wrecked if we don't block these buffs. Deacon is great for this tower, though, because he, he keeps the turn meters of the enemies under control, which prevents dumb stuff from happening.
All right. At least we got her alone. Which means we can get past her. She's just going to be annoying for a while. I'm saving my block buffs for the next one. I actually want her to take a turn this time. Perfect. You want those block buffs on there. Um, we're going to want Vergus in here in case he has to be the one that face tanks everything. Because from memory serves, this place is extremely obnoxious. Targeting those warlords because I know that they're a problem. I think Deacon, though, is helping a lot with the control. Because controlling them is often the first step to really getting a hang of them. Because before, if you don't have control, you're kind of screwed. You want to always keep that decreased defense up at all points. And then get rid of the... Uh, Madam Ceres afterwards, but you want to target the warlords because otherwise the warlords will run you over. <sighs> we got to need an armager in here. Let's see. You're... Increase the attack.
This is gonna be rough. We're just going to have to keep cycling this around until we kill them all. This is literally what it's it's come to. Literally just got to cycle them around until they die. It's brutal, but that's exactly what I got to do. Okay, new Borgoth. Um, hum. I'm going to want to stick the rosin out here. We're going to want Armager. But we're also going to want We don't want to do this on manual. Is this going to be easy? Absolutely not. Actually, this is a bad team comp. Okay, so we're just we're we're all gonna want the rosin. We're gonna want a reviver. Probably Godseeker, Deacon. Yeah, this this sounds good. We we we're gonna want Armager. We're gonna want Armager. Because we're going to want to compress its turn meter no matter what of in case of a provoke. That's what we're going to want. Now remember... that uh, the Krisks aren't the big threat. The main threat is everyone else. Focus the rest, and then we can focus the Krisks. The dream of all pay-to-win players. Krisk. <laughs> Unless they own multiple of him, in which case... It'll be other champs. Here's the thing. I don't even want a Krisk. I know everyone else wants Krisk, but I want Mishald. The game won't give me either Krisk or Mishald or any of that crap. Maybe one day I'll get one. I don't know. Who knows?
Who knows? I do know this boss is very Krisk like in a lot of terrible ways. There's a reason I'm picking Rosin in here instead of Drex. Because Rosin has a resist aura, good sustain damage, and potentially turn meter decrease, you know? Anything with turn meter decrease is great for this boss fight. Lissandra... Allure, anything with a turn meter decrease that's the right affinity or has a shield. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is decrease his turn meter. And get that weekend, not bad. Good. That was a nice turn meter drop. You want as many turn meter drops on this guy as you possibly can get. Especially in the early phase before you break the shield. Because the one thing that you can count on here is that even when you provoke Armager. He's going to go for it. When he gets his turn, whenever that is, he's going to keep scrapping with this The level of provoke See the real problem is is that we haven't broken the shield yet. Also because even if they all die Rosin still lives. And Rosin can face tank this boss. Which is one of the reasons why Rosin is actually useful in the fight versus Scarab. Yep. Rosin is actually incredible versus Scarab. Let's give it a go. Gonna want to kill off Tomb Lord first. Okay, he's provoked. 
Boom shakalaka. All right, like and subscribe. I will be continuing to update you. And hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll finally get to the end of this dang tower. One can hope. We'll see you all then.